Hello, Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to Chapter 1, Function Transformations. In this video, we're going to look at Section 1.1, Horizontal and Vertical Translations. So let's talk about what a transformation is. It's really the theme of Math 30-2. It's any kind of an action that changes the equation or changes the position, shape, and orientation of a graph. So really, 30-1 is all about the study of change. We're going to change the function from unit to unit, but it always comes back to this transformation. So that's the overarching term. Today, we're going to look at a specific type of a transformation called a translation. So a translation is a transformation that moves all the points on a graph the same distance and the same direction. So it's like I'm picking the graph up and I'm moving it maybe three units to the right or two units down. So translations are going to change the position of a graph, but not the shape. It's not going to make it bigger or smaller and not the orientation. So by translating a figure, you're not going to have it opening up and then opening it down. Okay, so translations can be left or right, that's what we call as a horizontal translation, or up and down, which is what we call a vertical translation. So let's look at those in a little bit more detail. So a vertical translation, it's straight up, it runs up and down. So because it runs up and down, it only affects the Y coordinate. So you can see in my mapping notation here, all my original points x, y become the points x, y plus k. So k is that vertical translation, what I'm moving. Now, if k is positive, I'm going to move up. If k is negative, I'm going to move down. So what I want you to remember is vertical, like the cartoon, is straight up, which means there's no trickery involved here. Okay, so when I have a vertical translation, it's straight up, it's straightforward as you would expect. So here you can see I'm adding 4, that's going 4 up. Here I'm subtracting 4, which means I'm going down 4. Now, let's compare that to a horizontal translation. So horizontal translations affect the Y coordinate because I'm going left to right. So horizontal, like a lying down position, I want you to remember that Horizontal lies like Pinocchio. So horizontal lying down, but lying like as in not telling the truth. The reason I want you to remember that is because horizontal is not exactly what it seems. So see in this expression here how I have x minus 4? You would think that that would mean I'm going 4 units to the left, but I'm actually going right 4 units. And see how I have x plus 4? I'm actually in that case going left 4 units. So for horizontal, I want you to remember that horizontal lies, it is the opposite of what you would expect. If you'd like to see a video on why horizontal is opposite of what, I, what, what it appears in the equation, I'll have a link in my video description for another video so you can see that. So mapping notation. Mapping notation is how I relate one set of points to another. And it is in big letters, literally, what happens from point to point. So if I look at this example here, here's a mapping notation. So x, y here is my original point. And then it becomes x minus 2. So minus 2 literally means I'm going 2 to the left. And then for my y, I'm taking all my y values and I'm adding 1, which literally means I'm going up 1 unit. So mapping notation is literally what is happening point to point. So let's do a couple examples putting this together. So in this first one here, I want to describe using mapping notation how the graph of g of x, which is in red, can be obtained from the original graph f of x. And then we're going to write an equation of for g of x in terms of f of x. So if you look at blue, blue is the original graph. So just look, I have some nice points identified there and let's look at what happens to each point. So you can see the blue point here goes over one, two, three, four units here. And you can see it's the same for this one. It's the same for this one here and for this one here. All the blue points are being moved left four units. So when I'm moving something left four units, again, looking at my key points to help me, I can see now that I have a horizontal translation. So my description would be a horizontal translation four units to the left. 
So let's talk about our mapping notation. Remember mapping notation is literally what is happening. So I am literally moving four units left. So I will literally subtract four from each X value. And I subtract it from X because the points are moving left and right. So X minus four and the Y points stay the same. Notice the Y points all line up. So since I'm literally moving four units left, my H value is negative four. My Y values are staying the same, so I'm not doing anything to them. So I'll denote that with a zero. So if I want to put this into my format for transformation, my function is X minus H, and H is a negative four, and then plus K, which is just zero. So instead of writing it as x minus a negative 4, I could really say that that's a positive 4. And I don't really need to write on the plus 0 because nothing's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as f of x plus 4. And then I'm just going to leave it like that. So I'm going to leave the 0 alone. Okay. So again, remember horizontal translations lie. So left 4 is actually x plus 4. So in this tip here, I said, let's look at some key points to help us determine what the transformation is. So here are some key points you can look at. You can look at x-intercepts, y-intercepts, the vertex, or start points. So those are some of the things that you can look for to see what transformation has occurred. Okay, let's look at this one, same idea. So we're looking at f of x as the original graph in blue. What did I do to have the graph of g of x? So if I look at just the vertex here, the vertex was at 0, 0, and it's now at 4, 0. So it looks like what happens there is that I've moved four units to the right. And you can see this point also moves four units to the right. In fact, all of them move four to the right. So that tells me that I have a horizontal translation of four units to the right. So now that I know what my transformation is, I can come up with my mapping notation and then the equation. Remember, mapping notation is literally what's happening. So literally, I am moving it to the right. I am adding four to all of my x values. Notice that my y value stayed the same because it all lines up. So since I'm adding four to each x value, my h value is four. And I'm not doing anything to y, so my k value is 0. So putting it in here, f of x minus h and then plus k. But I don't really need to write the plus k because it's 0. So I'll just write it and I'll erase it just like that. So looking at this equation here, you can see again horizontal lies because that x minus 4 actually means 4 units to the right. So just remember horizontal lies vertical straight up. Let's try another one. So in this question here, same idea. We're looking at f of x is the original graph, g of x is our ending graph. So let's look at the start points here. So it started at 0, 0, and this one here starts at 0, 3. So it looks like I've gone three units up. And you can see this point has gone three units up, this one has, and this one has. So it looks like for sure I have a vertical translation three units up. So vertical, up and down, straight up, only affects your y values. So for your mapping notation, you are literally adding 3 to each y value. So that means that x stays the same. Do you see how the x values all line up? And the y values will become plus 3. So since I'm not doing anything with the x values, my h is 0, I'm not changing that. And my k is positive 3. So putting this into the equation here, I have f of x minus h plus 3. So if we look at that, we don't really need to write the x minus 0. So I'm actually going to rewrite that as just f of x and then plus my 3. Okay, so anytime you have a 0, you don't have to write it in there. It's not necessary. So I want you to remember when it comes to vertical, vertical is straight up. That's why up 3 is really plus 3. Okay, in this example, 
looks like there's more than just one movement going on. So let's look at our vertex. See our vertex here was at zero, zero, and it ends up being down here at negative four, negative five. So I've gone down, but I've also gone to the right. So I've gone five units down and four units to the left. So I have two transformations going on here. So to describe it, I would say it is a vertical translation, five units down, and a horizontal translation, three units to the left. So looking at my mapping notation, this is literally what is happening. So if I'm going down, I am literally subtracting five. If I'm going four to the left, I am literally subtracting four. So I'm literally subtracting five from my y value, and I'm literally subtracting four from my x value. So it's going to look like this. Subtract four from my x value, and subtract five from my y value. So since I've subtracted four from my y value, my h value is negative four. And since I've gone five units down, my k value is negative five. So into my equation, I'm going to substitute it in f of x minus negative 4 and then minus 5. So in the inside here, see how you have subtracting a negative? That's the same as adding a positive. So let me write that a little bit better. So I'll rewrite this as f of x plus h and then minus 5. So remember on the outside, minus five, literally what's happening. On the inside, plus four, opposite of what is happening because horizontal lies. Okay, so vertical is straight up, so five units down is literally minus five. It's going to be y minus five. Horizontal lies, so four units left is actually x plus four. So that's why we put it into the equation like that. Okay, this one here, we're given a graph and we want to sketch a specific graph. So the graph of f of x is given down here below and I wanna sketch the graph of y plus two equals f of x minus four. So my tip to you is you have to isolate your y first, otherwise you're not gonna know what's happening with y. So to isolate y, I'm just going to subtract two from both sides of the equation. So that's gone, so I'm left with y equals f of x minus four minus two. Okay, so let's look at what this means in our equation. So in our equation here, horizontal lies. So that x minus four over here really means four units to the right. Vertical is straight up, it's straight up honest. So when I have a minus two here, y minus two, it literally means y goes two units down. Okay, so now that I know the equation, I've isolated y, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. It's like I'm picking this graph up and I am moving it four units to the right. So let's do that. So four units to the right. So one unit, two unit, three units, four units to the right. And then I'm gonna take it and move it two units down. One unit, two units down. So this is my new graph. So I can label these. This is the graph here, y equals f of x. And this here is the graph of y equals f of x minus four minus two with the translation done. Okay, let's try another one. So for this one here, we have the graph of f of x and the graph of y of x. So f of x is the black graph and g of x is the blue graph. We wanna determine the equation. Okay, so looking at just any kind of a key point, you can look at any key point that you want. So let's look at A. If you look at the original A and the new A, A prime, I can see that it's been moved down and to the left. So just counting that, I see it's down four, and then moving it over, I see that it's one left. Okay, so my tip for you here is if I've gone down four, that means my K value is negative four. If I've gone left one, my h value is negative one. So these are literally what we're doing. Now we can just substitute it into the format that they want. So I'm gonna say y minus my k value equals f of x minus my h value. Notice I used brackets for my substitution. So it's going to become y, take away a negative four is a y plus four. 
and f of x, take away a negative 1 is really like adding 1. So that's the equation that they want in that form for a graph that has gone down 4 units and left 1 unit. So in my last two examples, I want to just focus on an equation and a specific point. So in this one here, I want to know what vertical translation is applied to y equals x squared, that's just a parabola, if the transformed graph, that's the changed graph, passes through the points 3 and 5. So to do this question, we really need to understand what a vertical translation is. And a vertical translation is something that only affects the y value. So vertical up and down only affects the y value. X stays the same. So remember in our format, we said that xy is going to become xy plus whatever k is. So since x stays the same, this transform point that it passes through 3 and 5, the original graph would also have an x value of 3. So what we need to know, to know what vertical translation has occurred, if my original point has an x value of 3, what is the y value that goes with it? So I can go to my equation. My equation is y equals x squared. So if y equals x squared, and I originally know my x value is 3, my original y value has to be 9. And I can verify that by looking into uh, the equation into the calculator. So if I look at my parabola, there it is, you see when x is 3, y does have a value of 9. So the point went from 3, 9 to the point 3, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over here, 3, 5. So what happened? So for me to go from a point 3, 9 to a new point of 3, 5, you see from going 9 to 5, you can see that you are going 4 units down. So what kind of vertical translation was applied? A vertical translation of four units down. So let's stick with this graph, but we're going to look at horizontal now. So what horizontal translation is applied to y equals x squared if the translation image passes through the point 2 and 5? So again, you need to know about horizontal translations. So horizontal translations left and right only affect your x value, meaning y stays the same. So the mapping notation, I'm just going to correct this, okay? The mapping notation is xy becomes x plus h and y. So y stays the same, okay? So xy becomes x plus h and y. So that means that my original point became 2 and 25. Well, if y stays the same, I know that my original point had a y value of 25. So I need to figure out what x value goes with that. So let's go with our original equation, y equals x squared. So 25 equals x squared. So x equals plus or minus, remember to take the positive and negative root when you take a square root. So that means that x can be positive or negative 5. So let's look at that graphically and see if that actually makes sense. So looking at the graph, I can see, yes, it passes through negative 5 and 25 and positive 5, 25. So I have two answers here, and we need to look at both. So originally, my point could have been 5, 25 and become the point 2, 25. In that case, to go from 5 to 2, I went 3 units to the left. Okay, so that's one possible answer. Or... I could have this other point, negative 5, 25, going to the point 2, 25. And in this case here, from negative 5 to positive 2, you can see that I have a horizontal translation of 7 units right. So both of these, I would want to see both of these answers. So what horizontal translation occurred? Either 3 units left or 7 units to the right. So to summarize this lesson here, okay, so remember your h value is your horizontal and horizontal lies. It lies down and it lies because it's not telling the truth. So mapping notation, literally what happens, which is nice, but when you look at the equation, it's always the opposite. So if I have an x minus h, it actually means I've moved to the right h. If I have an x plus h here, it actually means I've moved h units to the left. So just remember horizontal lies minus goes to the right, plus goes to the left, okay? So with horizontal, x changes its y that stays the same. 
Okay, vertical is straight up, so it's always telling the truth. So if I have plus k, I'm going k units up. If I have minus k, I'm going k units down. When I'm moving up or down, it is y that is changing, x staying the same. So when it comes to me being a math teacher, I will do algebra, I'll do trig. But graphing, as I've done in this lesson, well, graphing is where I draw the line.